You know, thinking about it, I think it's kind of funny how many seating options I've made since moving to the country. Let's see, Adirondack chair, a few tall Adirondack chairs, a two-person porch swing, also a single-person porch swing, and then also a bed swing. If you can't tell, I kind of love being outside and I like to have plenty of seating options. So let's go ahead and add a rocking chair to the mix, shall we? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this one. It's a very simple design and build, but it is sturdy and it's super comfortable. Jumping right into it, one rocking chair requires six one by sixes of your choice of material. I picked Western Red Cedar because even though it's a naturally durable material, it is extremely lightweight and allows me to be able to easily move around the completed chair. I had a few leftovers from my picnic table build. Oh yeah, add that to my sitting options list. So Western Red Cedar is what I used. I spent some time in my 3D modeling software designing the chairs so that I could cut out some custom templates, which made this job go a lot smoother. I started off by tracing the templates to the seat bottom and the seat back onto the cedar board. Since cedar comes with only one side smooth and the other really fuzzy, I used some miter saw to cut the parts to rough length first, but then ran each part through the thickness planer before moving on. This will drastically reduce your sanding time later on. Since I made my stand for the planer mobile, I always move it to my shop porch to keep the mess down inside. Pro tip. Moving back inside, I could now use the bandsaw to cut the parts out. On these, you only need two of each part and you could cut one, then use it for a template on the other, but I just took my time and cut both out individually and on my lines. Once all four parts were cut out, I started joining things together. Type on three is the waterproof wood glue, so it's my go-to choice for any projects ending up outside. I flushed up the two angles on the parts, clamped them down using my self-tensioning armor tool clamps, then countersunk first and drove in two screws. I repeated the steps to make up a second, making sure to make it a mirror of the first and not identical. Okay, so now let's make some slats to span across these two supports. I flipped out the wings on my miter saw stand, set a stop lock to make these repeatable cuts go really fast but accurate, and then chopped my board to length. Then I took them to the table saw to cut into strips. <laughs> I keep the remote to my DC on the drop down to my saw so that whenever I walk over to use the saw, I can easily switch it on. By the way, remember that I have a running 5% off coupon code you can use on any Clearview dust collection item. Next was to round over all of the edges for a softer look and also feel. I loaded all my slats up on my mobile workbench and wheeled them over to my router table where I used the half inch infinity roundover bit on both of the long edges. Okay, and now load them back up and head back to the seat assemblies to start attaching them. I went ahead and used a small dab of glue on the underside of each slat. It's a small surface area, but with everyone having glue at both connection points, it really adds a lot of stiffness to the seat once it's all put together. Even though this will live its life under a porch and should be protected from the rain, I went ahead and used Type on 3 since it's a waterproof wood glue. I started with the very backmost slat on the base, then jumped to the very front and worked my way back from there. I cut a spacer to make lining these up go quick. And you can see I'm also pre-drilling using a countersink before I drive in the screws. This will prevent splitting as well as make sure the screw head is seated below the surface. Make sure to use exterior grade screws here. Perfect, okay, that is the seat done. Let's set that aside for right now and bring in the parts that make up the legs. I made these back when I was cutting up my other material, first ripping my boards to width at the table saw and then using the miter saw to cut the end angles and also the length of the boards. So the joinery on this chair is half laps, but it's kind of a, a cheated half lap. What I did was use two boards, cut to different lengths, and then glued together to create the half lap. Whereas if I was using thicker material, then I would have carved away half of it to create this joint. As I put together this leg, I have my long stretcher and then the short one. I position a leg flush to the end to line up where the short one goes, making sure to test fit the second leg in place as well and see if it's flush too. Since it was, I cleared away the parts, laid down some type on three and assembled for real this time. Instead of waiting for it in clamps, I used a brad nailer to act as a clamp while that glue set up, trying to remove as much as the glue squeeze out as possible once I was done attaching things. 
Next, I cut to length the second piece of the legs. I'll call these the short legs because I'm making another set of cheat style half laps here. You'll see in the shot here where I'm gluing them to the existing long legs. I laid down some wood glue, then attached the short legs to the long legs, making sure everything was lined up flush. Before moving on, let's go ahead and do some cleanup work. If you don't like the brag nail holes, keep in mind you can always use clamps. Or what I do in cases like this is use a dab of Tight Bonds fast setting wood glue called Thick and Quick. I shove a small amount in the nail hole and then rub some sawdust into it. Now you can hit it with a sander and the holes all but disappear. Then while I was sanding, I gave all of the parts up to this point a good run over. Just hitting it with 180 grit right now. Then I took the frame over to the router table and rounded over the edges on both sides with that same half inch bit. Before moving on, I would like to thank this video sponsor, which is Simple Strap. This is a brand new to me product that I'm absolutely in love with. It's the original all-purpose rubber tie-down, and it's a fast and easy way to secure pretty much anything. What's so cool is it's a self-gripping rubber strap, so there's no need for complicated knots, hooks, ratchets, or buckles. It comes to you in 20 feet long, and you can cut it to any length you want. But it has an incredible 1,000 PSI, and it's totally reusable and recyclable. All you have to do is simply wrap the strap tight, making sure the first and second wrap are in contact, then tuck the end into the last wrap and boom, you're done. Cut, wrap, tuck. I see the versatility of Simple Strap being enormous. I personally love the rubber surface because it doesn't create any marring on surfaces such as a brand new finished project or something plastic such as whenever I'm hauling my kayak. By the way, these were great even when wet or on a wet surface. If you're interested in this fast and easy tie down solution, then visit the link down in the description to find out more about Simple Strap. Big thank you to Simple Strap for sponsoring this video and making my workflow better. Now let's get back to that project. Okay, so let's talk about the rocker. Whenever I tackled this project, I had no idea how complicated it was. And this bottom rocker is the reason it's difficult. The length, the slope, its relation to the legs of the rocking chair, it all factors into if the rocking chair works and if so, how well. So what I did was I grabbed a piece of cardboard then traced a rocker that I knew I liked the feel of and created myself a template. I used the bandsaw to cut it out and then traced that onto a cedar board. This part holds a lot of weight, so when you're tracing this, tilt the template as much as you can to get as much straight grain running through the length of this rocker. When I cut this part at the bandsaw, I cut as close to my line as possible, then used my belt sander, turned upside down, and clamped to my workbench to smooth it out. It's really important that the bottom curve not have any hitches in it, so take your time. Or you can buy my template and not worry about it. Because once you have a template that's good to go, you can use a flush trim bit to make the remaining three. I'm using what's called the Mega Flush Trim Bit by Infinity, and it can flat get the job done. Remember to turn down the router speed if you're getting into a larger diameter bit. Okay, another pause for cleanup work. I wanted this rocker to fit into the half laps of the legs seamlessly, which means I needed the short legs to match the curve of the top of the rocker. If you buy the templates, the short leg templates will have this curve for you. But since I was doing this as I went, I would set the part in place, see where the high spots were, and then use my palm belt sander to knock them down. And this is such a good sander because the belt is flush on one side, meaning I could easily get into this 90 degree tight spot with ease. Now, even though things looked good, I wanted to do a dry fit and test it out before I did the joinery in the rockers. So what I did was clamp one rocker to the chair legs, clamp the seat to the legs, and then tested it out. I was nervous about two things. One, the rocker action feeling awful, and two, the clamps not holding up and me busting my butt. But thankfully, neither was an issue. I'm happy. As you can see, I was thrilled it worked. So since that worked, let's go ahead and make the second rocker. On the first rocker, I held it in position and then cut around the long leg. 
This gave me the half lap position that I could use a bandsaw or jigsaw to cut out. This would typically make this piece way too weak to do any good, except I was laminating a full rocker directly on top of it. This not only makes it strong, but also gives the outside a smooth look all the way down the rocker. Of course, when gluing the rockers together, it's really important that they are lined up properly. Just the same, it's important to get all of the glue squeeze out cleaned up afterwards as well. After repeating to make a second, it was time to attach them to the body. I found the best way to do this was to lay it on its side to attach the first one. I applied more type on three, then set it in clamps for a few hours before standing it up and repeating on the second side. Using the help of my multi-stand to prop up the front while the back end rested on my workbench. Perfect. After the glue dried on both sides, I reinforced these connections with some oak dowels. To do this, I grabbed a Forstner bit and drove, I don't know, about halfway through the leg. I placed two dowels at each connection, so four total per side. Now, even though it looks like a rocker, there's still one last component, arms. I wasn't yet sure where the arms would fall on the back when I was making the slats, so I just made them all the same length. To make way for the arms to extend past the slats, so I used my multi-tool to nip off the ends of the slat. I used my template to trace out on a board, then cut, then rounded over each one of the arms before I positioned it on top of the legs and attached it. I originally thought to do some like blind dowels here to pin this to the legs, but since the screws are exposed on the seat, I figured these would blend in as well. Of course, countersinking here as well to seat them under the surface, giving it a nice smooth feel. Then on the back, I punched a hole through and attached it using a carriage bolt. I can't tell you how much I love it. I am so happy with it. I think raw Western red cedar is gorgeous. So I'm going to apply a clear coat to keep its beautiful coloring. If you don't know, Western red cedar is naturally rot resistant. So if you plan to place your chair in the elements, then it's a good choice of material. If you would like to make your own, I have a set of templates that come with a set of plans available on my website. So check the description if you're interested. I also have templates for a lot of other projects, such as my porch swing, the growth chart ruler, and even my lounge chair. That is it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your comments down in the section below, and I will see you on whatever I'm building next. Actually, real quick before you go, just two quick announcements. One is merchandise. I am bringing back my two limited time t-shirts, Stop Cracks in Your Tracks, and also Maker's Gun of Make. These are two designs of mine that I've brought out selectively over the last year, and they're gonna be available for all of November and December. So be sure to pick one up if you're interested before they're no longer available. And then second, I am so excited to announce that Isotunes, who's been my personal hearing protection for the last three years, has come out with a brand new product in their OSHA compliant Bluetooth hearing protection line, and they're calling these the free. They're the same high quality noise isolating earbuds as their other models, but these are 100% wireless. They have a seven plus hour battery life and the portable charging case gives them two full charges before it needs recharging. All of them are OSHA compliant, so anytime I'm in the shop or doing yard work, you can't find me without them. Then, since they're noise isolating, anytime I'm traveling and working out, again, I always have them with me. If you're interested in trying the Isotunes free or any of their other models, they have given me a $10 off coupon code to give to you. So you can use the code APRIL at checkout and get $10 off any of the models. But be sure to use your $10 off coupon code quickly because it is only good for the next week. Big thank you to Isotunes for making such high quality products that make my life easier in so many different levels and also for supporting what I do. All right, that's it for this one. I hope y'all are having a great week. Nope. No. Here we go. No. Please sit with me. Look, I'll rock you. I'll rock you. Yeah. Life is good. <laughs> I think she's totally sitting in my rocking chair.